These tough economic times are challenging on a lot of levels, not just to our careers and businesses, but also to our attitudes. We'll have some advice on how you can push through these challenges and reach for your goals tonight on Cox Forum. you're going to find out how to wake up and jump start your life and so much more. But first, we're going to find out what's been happening in Orange County as we take a look at the OCN2 with Rob Whitfield. Rob? Tonight, we're talking with Dan Manginelli. He, for the past 24 years, has been involved in the mortgage and real estate industry and has, uh, well, within just a couple of weeks, will come out with his first book. It's called Wake Up, Jumpstart the Life You've Always Had in Mind. And uh, hopefully, he'll be inspiring us to get through these tough economic times and uh, maybe focus back on maybe what we had in mind before the economy started going south. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dave. So you, know, you talk about making a, a fundamental change in your life. Do you have to do that? I don't think it's necessary. I, I, I do believe that everybody has greatness in them. And one of the biggest things in this book that I wanted to kind of relay to a lot of people is that there, there's so much great that people have that they stop themselves from doing. There's that little man in your head that kind of stops you from making changes. And most of the greatest things happen in our life because of some significant change that happened in our lives. And I mean, change equals stress and uncertainty, but it's definitely necessary for anybody to grow to any new level. And some of the most greatest things that have happened in, in people's lives have come from a change that they didn't expect or want. Mm -hmm. And the book is, the premise of, of that is taking it to the things that are inside of you is just pulling them out because they already exist. It's, I'm not gonna be a guru through a book to say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna teach you all these new things about life but just give you a different way to get quicker results. And we're going to find out how to do this as we continue talking with our guests right after this. Dan Manginelli's book, Wake Up, Jumpstart the Life You've Always Had in Mind, is coming out uh, within a week or so, and we've got him here tonight to give us a little bit of a preview and uh, maybe uh, you know spread a little of the uh, good advice that he's got in the book for us. Now, you mentioned one of the things that sometimes happens in your life. In fact, you almost say you have to sort of run into challenges and, and, and uh, to, to get through them. Uh, have you had challenges in your life? I mean, what, it, what, what yeah, have you gotten through? Everybody has a great story. Um, adversity happens to everybody at every level. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you, myself, everybody even watching is going to have something that happened through adversity. It's, it's how you handle the adversity to move on because that's the choice part. What happens sometimes you don't have the choice of. A divorce happens, you don't have a choice sometimes. It's how you handle because that's your choice there. Um, handling those and going to the next level is really what pretty much about and how you handle the things that happen to you as well. Um, I call something, you know, as, as you said, is what happens and a lot of people, what I have in my book is I call it smile thieves. Every day you might go out and people try to steal your smile and it's just the truth that you can go out one day and you can be dressed in the best dress you have or your best suit and you can walk out and in a second someone could look at you and go, wow, that's kind of tight and steal your smile in a matter of a second. Well, it's interesting, you know, it, 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 they say, you know, people can compliment you, you know, nine or you know, eight out of nine times, but one person comes up and says one thing derogatory, and that knocks you down. Why does that do that to us? It's a smile thief, just exactly yeah. what I said. And we wouldn't let someone reach in our pocket and take $2, yet daily we let people steal our smile. And why is that? It's because, again, self-image is a big thing. Um, and we don't like to believe, everybody likes to think they have self-confidence in, in a lot of ways. But your self-image of what you think of yourself really deems on what other people think of you. And a lot of people make decisions based on how is this going to look to somebody else? Mm -hmm. A lot of things people wear is how are they going to see me today at work or what is it going to look like to somebody else? 
And what I try to have everybody realize is all these things are normal for a lot of people. It's just your choice on how you want to handle and overcoming any adversity that you have. And the original question was is, have I had any adversities? And yeah, um, I'm in the mortgage industry. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. in my adversities, I mean, I started 24 years ago, I started at a very young age, and uh, life was great. I mean, in, in 2006, I was had a you know a great stockholder in a pretty big company, and in a day, it went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And I started writing the book prior to that. So I mm -hmm. learned a lot, obviously, talk about adversity and overcoming the adversity. And what I learned is the true character of a man is revealed through adversity because you find out who the real leaders are and who's running for the door when there's a fire yeah. rather than saying, hey, let's help and get everybody out of it. Yeah. Um, and like you were saying, the adversity hit pretty hard. But, yeah, but you know, so, okay, let's, let's put yourself in that position. Sure. 2006, you know, things are collapsing. Uh -huh. I mean, didn't at any point you're going, oh, no, this is awful. I mean, didn't you I mean, ever climb well, into that little dark In 2006, dark it was great because that was before. So 2006, it actually was wonderful because I think I was golfing a lot and wondering where I was going to retire. Oh, uh, but oh. So, I mean, that was great. July of 2007, okay. right in there, right. just in the 2007 part, the industry in a whole had really taken a turn. And yeah, a lot of people did curl up and, and go do something else and realize that I can't make a living doing things. Um, how do you push on from that is, you know, in, in my position where I was, to me, it wasn't a choice because I had you know, 1,500 people looking at me mm -hmm. saying, where are we going now? Where, where are you leading us to go? So, you know, I, I weigh my options a lot, but it is easy to look at it and actually take the challenge and go, I'm not up for the challenge. I just, and there's certain days that people look at their day and say, I'm just not up for the challenge today. And hopefully in a way, and, and seeing in the book is, there's a way every day that to realize that there's something great gonna happen. You just have to find it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but never in that time did you ever kind of find that sort of place, well, I'm not up to this. Did, did you're you're ever digging in there waiting for me to say, yeah, I can crawl I under the desk. Yeah, I mean, it's all going to hell in a handbag. That's yeah. human nature. I, I, mean, I, I yeah. can't believe that you just kind of slid through and no, say, yeah, it, no, it, it's it okay, didn't. It's not sliding through. Is again, how I, how I approach it and what I try to get out a little bit is I weigh my options. So my options was get out of the industry, yeah. find a position for a lot of people, or just curl up and, and realize that this is it. And yeah. For me, I lost um, in one day, the company went bankrupt. So I was a pretty big stockholder. I, I, you know, when people had portfolios, remember those days when they'd call them portfolios and yes. not just bank accounts? Oh yeah, well now, when you had a portfolio and you'd look at it, and you'd say, hey, this is, I'm set. All my hard work for the 23 years I've been in the industry has now paid off, and in one day, millions of dollars gone. So what did you do? I mean, what, so what, what, what I did is I, my options were weighed. I mean, I could have I could have figured out and just took, took my losses and retired, but there was a lot of other people looking to me to say, what are we doing? And my goal from there was I took my focus off of the tragedy that happened or the adversity I was from and putting it on the other people and realizing that I have to help these people. They're, these people don't have jobs and they're living paycheck to paycheck. And now they're in an industry that is, is slowly sliding and that's when they also came up with that word, the mortgage meltdown. Mm -hmm. I mean, then the onion started unpeeling. So what did you do? I mean, what, what, what we did, did is I took from that company, we, uh, it was actually American Old Mortgage, from that company, we actually tried to um, come to an idea that that was a market-funded company. It was done where we were selling our loans on Wall Street. Wall Street didn't realize they were buying that bad of loans at that time, so we didn't know, so we thought we would go to a bank where there money from the depositors where you would go. Now, at that point, we chose a bank that didn't have a retail presence in there. We chose IndyMac Bank. Mm -hmm. now, you're laughing because, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, you know, okay, Bank, yeah. if you watch TV, which most of you yeah. do, that IndyMac Bank was taken over by the FDIC. So now one adversity turns into the next. Now the government comes and says, we're taking over your company. What are you doing now? So that 1,800 now turned into 800 because we had to weed people out mm -hmm. to another company who now is, you know, I'm part of running the number one mortgage company in the United States privately held. So it, it, it's... I really didn't look at it as of, oh my gosh, why me? Because a lot of people do do that. And that's the tough part. It's hard not to do. There's, there's yeah. just no doubt about it. I mean, bad things do happen every single day. And it's really tough. I mean, I unfortunately have friends that have been diagnosed with cancer. And that's horrid. And um, it's, it's tough to stay positive when all of a sudden you're looking at yourself and saying, why me? I mean, I didn't do anything to deserve this. The only choice you have there is how you're going to handle it to overcome the adversity. And that's where I said the true character of a man is revealed through their adversities. Could you find out what they have in them for the fight for the next stage? We're going to be finding out a little bit more, uh, not just about how to fight through adversity, but also to find out uh, what you think is going to happen in the mortgage <laughs> and real estate industry coming up right after this.